Good morning, Bioneers. How are you all doing? Woo! Uh, my name is Brock Dahlman, and I live and work at the Oxen Arts and Ecology Center, and I'm just uh, so happy to be here with you all. And such a big uh, family reunion of Bioneers today. And mamolish uh, uh, to Dean and, and the Miwok Nation and invoking the spirit of this land and the spirit of the waters. And I'm here to uh, invoke and honor, if you will, the fact that I'd like to hold a few moments of sacred space with you all to invoke and honor the spirit of fire. And uh, basically, um, you know, for all the people in the land and the forests and the watersheds in this last week in Northern California that have been so deeply affected and traumatized by the fires, um, we've, they've been all over, and, and I think I and the Bioneers community all just wish to express our love and support and shared commitment to the relief in this present and the recovery as we move forward for a just and equitable and resilient rebuild of our communities that restore and revitalize and hopefully will be stronger and more secure in the future. And I guess as we envision the healing of the fire survivors in Northern California, I don't know if many of you saw the meme that sh kept showing up on placards and, and cardboard throughout Sonoma County that basically said, the love in the air is thicker than the smoke, all right? Can you all say that with me? The love in the air is thicker than the smoke. The love in the air is thicker than the smoke. And so how we bring ourselves together and find compassion and empathy to f in the love in the smoke here and also the love in the air is thicker than in the hurricanes of the people in Houston and the Gulf Coast still suffering in Puerto Rico, in the islands in the Caribbean, our people that we work with, the Mosquito in Nicaragua and Honduras. Imagine hurricanes in, in Ireland and the fires currently in Spain and Portugal. And this is a short list, right, of, of where Gaia and Pachamama are basically demanding we act and listen to... Uh, find a new way to have right relations in our settlement with place and in how we inhabit uh, our places in a safe and non-toxic uh, relationship. And when we're faced with crisis, I know for myself, I'm, I epitomize the statistic, there's a strong tendency to, to isolate and to hunker down. And yet we know from trauma science that actually coming together with each other uh, is where the healing happens, and that's literally where our nervous systems ground and restore themselves. And so it's essential that we come together here to nourish our whole selves at Bioneers, especially considering the last week in Northern California, so that we can be stronger and more effective in these turbulent times where the needs are so many and so great. And so uh, for anyone who's feeling like you shouldn't be here and you should be back home doing something and working, you're here, this is the right place to be, we're doing the work and, and resilient reinforcing our relations with each other. Um, you know, oftentimes at Bioneers, <coughs> uh, we'll say it's all connected. And, and now's the time in, to live and act out those words um, to the fullest sense. And so I encourage us all to drink deeply from this precious well of our shared time together as we set in motion our reverential relations with our recovery. And it's at this gathering, I think, uh, many of us return to rethread our collective tapestry that is the shared fabric of community. And to be clear, the emergent whole of the emergence we see in this emergency is actually that um, the whole of Bioneers is greater than the sum of you Bioneers individually. And so the strength of the connections have been tested and really stress tested in Northern California. And I gotta say, and many of you may have seen this, that the myriad stories of volunteers, of first responders, of people opening up their homes, donating generously, um, to 7,000 homes in Northern California burned, right? So all those folks who've lost homes, who were evacuated due to issues with smoke levels, it's just been truly awe-inspiring. Um, and I also wanna specifically offer significant gratitude to those in our community who without question, without reservation, offered literal sanctuary for the many undocumented families who've already been suffering too much from uncertainty and oppression. <clears throat> for the past week, we at the Oxnard Arts and Ecology Center and the Sewing Circle community have continued to share the blessing of hosting a number of immigrant families 
at our place, and currently there's a, a, a mother who's pregnant and a number of beautiful bright-eyed children there. And the other night we were circled up after having a beautiful dinner with donated food from local farms, and the guitars were out, and, and one of the proud fathers, he just belted out this amazing Oaxacan ranchero love song to us all. And, and, and I felt that experience that's true, I think, for all of us, that in our multicultural selves, we grow stronger with adversity because of diversity, right? And that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And, and I don't know, did you all see some of the images of, of places like Alliance Redwoods where there were dozens and dozens of massage tables set out and there was just body workers and healers freely offering their services of acupuncture and body work to all of the, the firefighters who had just come off a 24-hour shift on the grueling line fighting fire or these other rapid integral healing centers that showed up in the Red Cross evacuation centers at the fairgrounds of Santa Rosa in Napa. Um, people just showed up. It, it was unbelievable. And, and I do want to say that while in Sonoma and Napa, because the scale of the fires has been significantly dramatic, I, I want to uh, give a shout out to the the tight-knit community, the ranching communities, the organic farming communities, and the tribal citizens and the Pomo nations of Redwood Valley and Potter Valley up in Mendocino County who didn't get as much attention, but to be honest with you, half the homes in Redwood Valley burned in that system. And, and, and so everybody needs our love from Mendo to Lake to Sonoma to Napa to, to Yuba. Thankfully, the fire in Boulder Creek is basically heading out now. And you all know me, I'm a guy of Filiac, and I also want to believe that the broader natural world is also in need of our support and partnership. And the other day I was in a big meeting with multiple agencies and other NGOs talking about mobilizing uh, responses to post-fire uh, erosion control and restorative practices. Those houses that burned are toxic waste sites, and we've got to keep that ash out of the creeks. And so how we mobilize to do that first and foremost. And protect our vulnerable waterways, especially with, uh, wow, blessings on sky water showing up yesterday in Occidental was unbelievably beautiful. But that water, how do we use the healing regenerative water to settle in the ash, to settle in all that fire retardant instead of delivering it to the waterways as our salmon are preparing right now in the oceans, all fattened up to come back home and spawn and make their babies. And so we want them to return to clean, uh, toxic-free water as well. Um, and it, it does feel important to me also, the biologist, the ecologist in me, to name the larger pyroecological experience we went through. And to be honest with you, in many cases, uh, witnessing some of the fires, watching the helicopter footage, there were slow moving, cool burns in the understories of the oak woodlands, in the savannas, in the prairies. And those ecosystems are co-evolved and they thrive on that relationship. They're pyro-adapted systems. And so it's a regenerative disturbance in that system. And in fact, indigenous peoples used fire as a healing regenerative tending of the wild tool for millennia. And so how do we find the balance between the terror of uncontrolled fire and the appreciation of regenerative fire and that inherent paradox as we must embrace this with humility, especially if we're to co-evolve and rebuild with these profound ecosystem processes that we're interdependent with. And to be honest with you, after all, the likely gift of a bunch of tasty morels and an efflorescent extravaganza of wildflowers this spring is, is going to be a good bomb. So, um, what I do want to say, though, is, let's see if that guy is going to work, <clears throat> is at this time, we all want to come together, and we're literally surrounded at every scale to find a way to weave in our unique threads of support. And in all honesty, one of the great threads of support for our growing tapestry of recovery is money, plain and simple. If you can open up your wallets. And so a number of us were looking at various recovery funds. There's a few of them on the slide here. I'll leave that up for a second, take a photo of if you need to remember. You can also go to the link at Bioneers there to find some of those. Um, there's an amazing group of folks that have come together to figure out how to most effectively direct that support to the communities that need it right now. So please uh, find that way to support. And then also I did want to note that with the generosity of the Bioneer staff and in relationship with myself and Trayton Heckman of Daily Axe and Aaron Axelrod of Lift Economy and a number of others, we are going to be hosting uh, conversations in the dome outside today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 4.30 to 6 to talk about uh, relief and recovery and rebuilding efforts uh, by those impacted by the fire. So please come and visit us there and be with us. And I just uh, thank you all for showing up. Thank you all for being here. It's with much gratitude and love. I support us all in this work. Thank you.